Hello everyone, this is Cindy with Monarch Mom DIY. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. If you're here for the first time, I hope you like what you see and you'll go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also the bell so you'll be notified of all my future uploads. And if you're returning, I thank you for being here again and for subscribing to my channel and helping it to grow. I hope all of you will give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps me to grow my YouTube channel. Today I am here with three more fall decor DIYs. All of them use at least one or two items from the Dollar Tree. The other items are found at craft stores, um, places like that, Walmart. Um, so I will tell you in each DIY where I purchase the items. I, if I don't buy the items at Dollar Tree, I always use a coupon like at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. So I'll be sure to share those money saving tips with you as well. So with all that being said, let's get into our fall decor DIYs for today. Thanks. For this first DIY, I'm using two 12 by 24 canvases, some fall leaves from Dollar Tree, some Mod Podge, and some black acrylic paint. I purchased these canvases from Hobby Lobby in a two pack for $5.99. I think you can even use a 40% off coupon to make them cheaper. I've had this big bottle of black acrylic paint from Michaels for a very long time, but I do know that you can get acrylic paint at Dollar Tree, so feel free to use that if that's what you have. So I'm just giving both of these canvases a really good coat of this black paint. I really like this paint. Um, I showed it, but I think it says like flow acrylic or something like that. I buy this not in the craft paint section, but actually over in the art paint section at Michaels. So you can look for it there. And with a coupon, it's actually a pretty good deal. I'm just using a foam brush to go over these and try and make sure I get all the white covered up on both canvases. So one thing you learn pretty quickly being a DIYer on YouTube is that things don't always turn out the way you attempt them. I thought about not even showing this, but then I thought I wanted to be realistic and just show you guys that what I just said, not everything turns out. So I tried using this Mod Podge to glue down these leaves. Um, they're not paper, they're kind of fabric and it just was not working out. I tried putting Mod Podge over the top of them and maybe if I would have let them sit overnight, they would have stayed down, but I just was not liking it. I tried using wax paper so I could rub them down, but here you'll see they just wanted to stick to the wax paper. So yeah, that was DIY fail number one. So I decided to switch to just using little bits of my hot glue gun and hot glue to stick the leaves down. So I'm starting with more leaves at the top and then I'm trying to place them so it looks like falling leaves for fall. And like most of my DIYs, this is something that is up to your personal taste. You can use whatever type of leaves you want. You could use paper ones and maybe glue them with the Mod Podge. These are just what I've had on hand from Dollar Tree. So while you're watching me glue the rest of these leaves, I'd love to know, um, has the season started changing for you where you live? Um, I'm in Michigan, Western Michigan, and I think our high today was in the 60s. Maybe it got to 70. So we've definitely felt the shift from summer to start leading into fall. So here's how they turned out. I made two so I can set them on my mantle on either side later on in the fall. 
This next project uses two glass vases from Dollar Tree, some buffalo check ribbon from Hobby Lobby, two wooden candlesticks and wood knobs from Michaels, and six of these clay saucers. I'm using the same black paint and I'm giving each saucer a good coat of it. Don't you wish you could actually paint this fast? Once the insides are dry, we flip them over and go ahead and paint the outside of the saucer. Next, I'm going to paint my two wooden candlesticks that are from Michaels in the unfinished wood craft section. I'd say one is about six inches tall and the other one about eight inches. Again, you can use a coupon if the unfinished wood is not on sale. I'm giving these both a really good coat of that same black acrylic paint. Once the candlesticks were dry, I went ahead also and painted the two wooden knobs that will be the top of my candy jar. And now we'll start assembling our candy jars. I am using a combination of E6000 and hot glue. First thing I'm going to do is glue the wooden knob to the top of one of the saucers. And this is going to be the lid of our candy jar. Next, I'm gonna take the two glass vases from Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue each one to the bottom of a saucer. And the third saucer will be used as the very base of our candy jar. So I'm gluing the candlestick to the bottom of the third saucer. I'm doing this for both candlesticks. When I went to put the final pieces together, I noticed that the metal of the candlesticks was a little higher than the wood. So I wanted to remove those. When I couldn't, I decided to just use the pliers to bend the metal inside so that it was hidden inside and the wood was flat. And the final pieces to glue together were the candlestick base and the saucer that had the glass on top. So I used again E6000 and hot glue to glue those together. I wanted to keep these jars fairly neutral so that I could use them for many different seasons. I plan on using them for fall here, obviously, and then changing out the ribbon and candy for Christmas, maybe even for Valentine's 
and for Easter. This ribbon is just some of the fall ribbon that I got at Dollar Tree last year. And I'm just going to fill these with a bag of candy corn and then put the lids on top. I just love how these turned out. I think they're so cute and I love that I can use these year round for different seasons and different holidays. What do you guys think? Okay, our last project is using a black foam board from Dollar Tree, one box of the tower blocks, a yardstick, and a white paint marker. The first thing I did is I cut this foam board in half, so it ended up being, I believe, 20 by 15, something like that. And I went ahead and just took some blocks and kind of measured out how many it would take along the two shorter ends and also along the long ends. The bottom and top of my sign foam board are going to be eight blocks and the two sides are 10. So what I'm doing here is I'm gluing together four sets of five and then four sets of four. I didn't want to, because my ruler is so short, um, I didn't want to try to make a long train of 10 and then of eight. So this ruler, squaring ruler, I don't know what it's called, is from the Dollar Tree. Um, the Gorilla Wood Glue there is from Walmart. It's actually fairly inexpensive and it does a really good job. You just do need to um, let this sit. I let these sit for a few hours before I come back to sand and paint them. What's really cool about this project is with one black foam board and two boxes of the tumbling tower is you could make two of these signs for just $3. I think it's awesome and I really hope you guys like how it turns out. So while my wood blocks were drying, I went ahead and with a pencil, wrote out the saying that I wanted for my sign. I just did this lightly in pencil and then I'll go over it with my white painter's paint marker from Walmart. So I wasn't just pulling this from my head. If you put in to Google search a saying that you're wanting and look at the images, you can find so many options. So you can kind of see my iPad sitting there to the right of the picture. And so it has um, this saying, gather here with grateful hearts. And so I'm looking at it and trying to um, copy the font. So the next step is to just go over it one time with the white paint marker. And um, yeah, I didn't really like how it turned out, but I wasn't planning to leave it like this. I will go back once the letters are dry and kind of um, give them some character, make them thicker in some places. Again, looking at the example on my iPad to guide me.
And here's what it looked like after I went over the letters. What I love about this white paint marker on the black foam board is it looks like chalk. Next, I'm going back to my now dried sets of five or four tumbling tower blocks, and I'm just lightly sanding them in case any glue um, kind of seeped through the edges. I'm going to give these a coat of my Waverly chalk paint in the color Truffle. It looks like a dark stain and this paint is super easy to use. I absolutely love it and I get it at Walmart. Next, I went back and gave the tops of the wood another quick sanding with the sanding block from Dollar Tree just to make them look not quite so dark brown. And the last step is just to take our hot glue and glue our strings of tumbling tower blocks around our foam board to make a frame. I love how simple this project is and especially how the white paint marker looks like chalk when it's on the black foam board. So just to recap for you, the tumbling tower blocks to go all the way around this black foam board is 36, one complete box. And here's our finished sign. I hope you guys like it and thank you again for watching this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you like what you see. And here are some of my other fall decor DIY videos that you might want to check out next. Thanks and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!